Okay, so in the last video, we just saw how to initialize a Git repository. Uh, we saw that it, it really doesn't do much. All it does is create this hidden folder where all of the Git data is just gonna, gonna be tracked. So now we actually wanna do something with this Git repository. We wanna save some code and, and learn about the history tracking of it. So up at the top, I have my terminal. Uh, it is in the desktop Git practice folder. And then just down below, I have that Git practice folder. Uh, open just so that we can see what's happening inside that folder. Uh, in this next step, we're actually going to start writing some files. I'm not worrying about code right now, but we are going to write some text files just so we can see. So you're going to need some kind of a, a text editor. Um, I, I forget what you can use notepad. That's fine. If that's all you have on windows, uh, I forget what Mac has by default. I'm going to use something called visual studio code. It's just a free, nice, easy uh, code editor. Uh, so it's it's just smaller than things like Xcode and Android Studio just for, for working on simple files. Uh, so there's a, again, there's a couple of ways that, that you can do this, but you wanna, you wanna create a new file. So you could, I guess you could just create a new file. I don't even know how to do it, not from the command line. Uh, so like on windows, you can right click and just create a new file. looks like on Mac, you can't, uh, I forget exactly the best way to do it. So the way that I would do it is from the command line. There's a command called touch and I'm just going to call this, uh, uh, we'll just call it first dot txt. Okay. And you'll notice that that actually, it did a couple of different things on my, on my computer within the Git practice folder. It created that file git.txt. You'll also notice that uh, this little extra part in my on my terminal kind of turned a different color. So this is part of the reason why I like using these other terminals, and you don't have to worry about it for now. Um, this is a visual indicator for me that says, "Hey, this is not a clean repository. It's not like 100% saved, right? So there's something else going on here." Now, if you don't have this tool, like this extra terminal that I have, there's ways from the command line that you can actually tell. And so uh, the maybe the number one command that I use when I'm dealing with Git is Git status. Okay, this tells me a whole bunch of stuff about what's happening in this repository as of right now. It tells me that I'm on branch master we don't have to worry about that for now. It says there's nothing saved yet, no commits yet, but it also tells me we have some untracked files. So right now I've created a file in this folder, in this repository, but it's not actually being tracked. So Git doesn't care about it, but it's telling us that, hey, I know that this is there. Uh, if you want me to start tracking this file and track the history of it, I will, but you have to tell me about that, okay? So, and then it tells us exactly how to do it. It says, what do I need to do? Git add file uh, to include, and then it will actually start, start being tracked. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm gonna say git add, uh, and then first.txt, okay? And you'll notice my terminal changed again. It has this little plus sign up at the top. Again, this is why I like to use, uh, I, just, I just cleared my terminal just so that you don't have to worry about that other stuff. Just the, the clear command just kind of wipes everything up above it and puts this up at the very top. So I just did clear. Um, but yeah, you'll see that I get this little plus symbol on mine. Yours won't have that. Um, but if you, if, if you want to see what happened, again, get status. And now it tells us we're on branch master. There's nothing saved yet, but we have some changes that can be committed. Right. And so this is this is what's called that. Uh, I mentioned it in the very first video. This is that uh, the staging area that that we actually have. So and it, it kind of even tells us. Uh, so we have some changes to be committed. Anything that's going to be committed is called staged. It's a staged file. And we're going to look at the difference of those. Um, it's in the staging area, but it tells us what we can do, we can run this command to unstage that. So that means that if I commit right now, this is the file that's gonna start being saved. 
Uh, but if I don't want that to be saved, then I can run this command. Like I said, this is why I use get status so much because it gives me like a, a high level overview of what's gonna happen if I commit or, or whatever, okay? So now I'm going to commit, get commit. There's actually nothing in my file right now. Git commit. Uh, and then a really important practice you want to get in the habit of is writing comments whenever you commit or writing a commit message. So I'm actually going to write a commit message. Just say whatever, created first.txt. Really simple message at this point because we didn't do anything. Okay. Uh, tells me some information. Can, this we don't necessarily have to worry about, kind of tells me what happened in the repository, but it said it created first.txt uh, and then whatever this create mode is, and don't worry about that. Uh, and then you'll see on my screen that status is now green again. That means that, means that Git knows about everything in the repository. Okay, I'm gonna clear that again, and then I'm gonna type Git status. Okay, it says on branch master, nothing to commit, working tree clean. Okay, so now that uh, first.txt is tracked uh, with Git, if we make any changes to this file, Git automatically knows about it and uh, we can, basically we can recover it or, or we'll have to commit those again, but it is being tracked. So uh, if, if, for example, I were to delete that, so let's move that to the trash. Uh, let's see what the command line does. So it, again, mine's a little bit different, but it it knows that the status is different than what it should be. So if I do git status, it tells me I'm on branch master. I have some changes that are not staged for commit. Okay. And so it will tell me, oh, well, if you want to stage these things, you can do git add or remove to update things that are going to be committed. Uh, git restore to discard changes in the working directory. So anything that isn't committed, anything that's on this folder that isn't staged or committed is so-called the working directory, okay? And so it, it tells me what the change is, okay? Deleted first.txt. Well, maybe we don't want to delete that, so let's use git restore first.txt. And then it put it back, and now we have a, a clean branch again. Okay, uh, so the same kind of thing happens if we wanna add text into that file. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna right click that file. I'm gonna open with, like I said, I'm gonna use Visual Studio Code. Uh, you can use, oh, I guess text edit is the default on Mac. You can use Notepad on Windows if you want. You can use Xcode, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I'm just picking Visual Studio Code. Okay, it opens up that file, I'm gonna, Make sure it's all in one screen. Oh, for some reason this window's pretty large. Okay, I'm gonna make sure it's all in one screen so we can see it. Geez, so we can see everything. Cool. Um, so now I'm gonna add my first line of text. Okay, make sure to save that. If I go into Git, uh, if I do Git status you can see it's telling me the exact same thing. Hey, you've modified first.txt. It's not staged for commit. So you've, you've added some code, or in this, in this case, just a line of text. You've added something. What do you want to do with it? Okay, and so we can do a git add first.txt, then git status, All right? We see that it's modified. Uh, so again, that's what that plus is. We've added it. Uh, and so if, if we do a commit, this stuff in this stuff here is what's going to be actually saved for this particular snapshot. Okay. If we don't want to do that, if we want to ignore it, we can say git restore dash dash stage, and then like whatever that the file name to unstage it. So let's, let's actually try that again. So git restore dash dash staged and then first.txt okay so all that's done now get status 
is it's taking it out of the staging area. So that staging area is a little bit confusing at first, especially when we only have one file. But as you start getting multiple files, uh, it's really helpful to have this extra little area of things that are going to be committed versus all of the changes that you have. Okay, so try not to get too confused about the staging at this point. Uh, but notice that that line of code is still there, right? I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything to get rid of it. I just that unstaged just took it out of the staging area. So let's do get status again. And it tells me the same thing that happened. It tells me the same thing that it told me when I had, when I deleted that file. It says, we have some changes that are not staged. They're not in the staging area. If you wanna restore or get rid of, the, get rid of all of that, then do get restore and then on this file and it will, it will discard those changes. I'm gonna do that again just to show. So get restore, oh, get restore first.txt. Okay, now you can see, let's do get status, nothing to commit. And then you also see in my file, it completely erased that, that line. So if you write some code and you just say, actually, I absolutely don't want that code, then you can kind of do exactly what I just did there. You can restore those, those things. But for us, uh, this is my first line of code. Okay. For us, now we actually want to save something. Okay. So, oh, we don't need to do that. Get status. Okay. So I want to add that file. Get add first.txt and then get commit dash m. We're going to add a comment. Added my first line of code. Okay, kind of tells you what it did. Uh, changed says it changed master. Says that that comment that I did, and kind of tells you one file changed. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. I'm going to clear my screen again. So, where is that history? Actually, let's let's add one more line of code just so that we have a little bit more history, okay? Uh, Git is pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna save that, make sure that it's saved. Git status, you'll see it tells me that something has actually been changed. So I'm gonna do git add first.txt, git commit. Uh, added a second line of code. Okay, so now we have now we have that. If I do get status again on branch master, there's nothing to commit. Our working tree or our working directory is clean. Now, as you're, I mentioned already that I I use get status a lot. I'm using it a little bit more now just so that we understand exactly what's going on. We have a couple of commits now. Uh, but you're probably asking yourself, well, like what, what exactly did we do? Like we're, we're doing all these extra steps, get status and get add, but it doesn't seem like it has, has got us anywhere yet. Like nothing, nothing interesting. So uh, the reason we care about all of this is because like I said, we can, we can actually track history of our code and we can view that history by doing git log. Okay. So this is going to show us, uh, a list of all of the commits, we can potentially look at the list, you know, for as far back in history as it goes, 10 years or however long, whatever. Uh, so the information that we're looking at, that we're looking at here is uh, we, we have these specific commit. Now, whenever we do a commit, Git automatically generates this like long, this long code, this long, they call it a hash. Um, but it automatically generates this secret code. It's, it's unique to this specific commit uh, that's done for us. Uh, I have author information. Uh, we didn't set up your author information, but uh, it's a good idea to do that, especially when working in a team. So then you'll be able to tell uh, who actually made this commit and what their email address is. You can see when it was actually created, and then you'll see that commit message. So I, the purpose of that commit message is to say, like specifically what thing, 
what thing was changed in this commit, right? So in this case, I added added a second line of code, uh, or in this case, I added my first line of code, or I created my first.txt file. Uh, and then you also see something up up at the top. Uh, I've been I keep mentioning whenever I do git status that I'm in the master branch. So this is kind of telling this head is kind of a reference that tells us like where we're currently looking at, right? So it's not guaranteed to be the, the top of the commit list. So, uh, but head is just at master right now. And we don't have to worry about that so much. But the cool thing about this is we can go back in time. So these are, these are three snapshots in time of what our code looked like. So if I were to go back in time to this specific commit, at the time this was created, we didn't have a second line of code, right? We didn't have this git is pretty cool line of code. So to go back in time, uh, I can copy this whole unique, uh, this whole unique commit ID, but we actually don't have to do that. Git is smart enough to, to recognize that if we grab like the first five or six, that it knows exactly which commit we're talking about. So in order to change what we're looking at, in order to look at some different code, we use the checkout command. So git checkout, and I'm just gonna paste that code. If you're on Windows, the copy and paste is a little bit more annoying. So maybe you just have to type it out, uh, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna check out that specific commit. And when I do that, it's gonna give me a bunch of information, but what I'm doing is I'm going back in time. Okay, and so the first thing that you'll notice is that git is pretty awesome line is, is gone. It's not there anymore. Okay. Over here, you'll notice that it gives me some information. It's kind of telling me, it's like a warning for people who are doing this saying like, Hey, uh, like you're not on any specific branch. You're just floating in the middle of, of history. So if you start making changes, it might affect, it, it might affect where you're going from, from here on out. Right. You're like changing the future in the way, uh, Kind of a way. It makes me think of like Bill and Ted, those Bill and Ted movies or something. Uh, anyway, don't worry about that. Um, now, so again, we went back in time. We were on Branch Master. That's where we were last. So we can go back to where we were, get checkout master. Okay. And now we've jumped forward to to where we where we originally were, like where like the the start of master. Okay, and we have that git is pretty cool. Yeah, so like I said, we have these three snapshots or a hundred snapshots, whatever, by, by looking at that commit message or just by using git. The fact is we can go back in time and look at the snapshot of code exactly at that time. This can be beneficial if you're, like I said, if you're fixing bugs. If I realize that a bug was introduced or if, if today I realize there's a bug in my code, but I'm not sure where it happened, I can start going back in time and looking at, uh, looking at, uh, try to find a commit before that bug actually happened, right? And then that way, hopefully it will help me narrow down what line of code or what section of code is actually breaking stuff. Okay, so uh, hopefully you see that there's value in having this history as you as your code gets bigger and bigger, it becomes really, really important to have this. So now, uh, or I guess in the next video, we're going to talk about how can we actually save the code onto a different server so we so we don't worry about losing it. We're going to talk about that in the next video.